morning, everybody. So we'll get the stream started here in a, just a minute or two, or class going in just a minute or two. Uh, get my dog placated. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on, my neck. All right, so uh, let's see. Do we have uh, everybody here? You guys on the stream? Don't see anybody on the stream. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, all right, so how are we doing this morning? That good, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get to it. So, um, last time what we talked about uh, was the derivative of the inverse functions, and um, so uh, and we were doing that kind of generally. Where this is really going to pay its pay its way in spades is with the inverse trig functions. So um, let's talk about those for a moment. Um, so, uh, back in high school, you probably, um, saw functions like arc sine of X, and sometimes this is written as sine to the minus one of X, uh, and then there are, of course, five others for all the other trig functions. Um, so there's a little bit of a problem with these, namely... Uh, inverse trig functions don't, they, well, they do exist, but we have to make a little bit of restriction. Okay, and so here's why. Um, so an inverse function only exists if the function is 1, 2, 1. Um, Willie, uh, do you have your web browser open for the Twitch stream? Um, okay, so, um, if, uh, and so what does it mean to be one-to-one? -one? Well, basically it means that um, any y value comes from, at most, one x value. Okay, so a, a sort of um, typical example of something like this would be like, let's say that I take Zach, Willie, um, and Matt, and say Austin, and then I have say vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Okay, and so let's say uh, you guys get to pick uh, your favorite flavor of ice cream, and uh, and I'm just going to make this up. So let's say that Zach really likes vanilla. Willie really likes chocolate, and Matt and Austin both really like strawberry. This would be not one to one uh, because strawberry was chosen by two different people. In this case, Matt and Austin. Um, but another uh, assignment could be something like this. Um, so let's say that I had strawberry, um, let's see, what's uh, another ice cream flavor? Uh, how about, um, uh, mint and, uh, how about cookie dough? Okay. So let's say that you guys picked it like, 
this, and nobody picked cookie dough. This would be one to one because um, any given uh, choice of ice cream came from at most one person. Uh, in this case, cookie dough was not chosen by anybody, uh, but that's still okay. Um, Willie, you, you see it? You with us now? Uh, yeah, okay, good. Um, so, uh, obviously, we're not going to be sitting around talking about ice cream and stuff all day. Uh, so, the way that you tell uh, if a function is one-to-one -one graphically is the horizontal line test. So, uh, you guys probably remember from high school, the vertical line test tells you whether or not you've got a function. And so the horizontal line test will tell you whether or not that function is one to one. So if I graph, say, for example, sine of x, right, then it's going to look something like this and uh, et cetera. Uh, then this big time fails the horizontal line test because uh, any horizontal line I draw intersects the graph of this thing uh, actually infinitely many times, so uh, more than once. Okay, so sine of x is not 1, 2, 1. Um, but if we restrict the uh, range of x's that we'll talk about, then we can make it sort of one-to-one. -one. And what I mean by that is um, the, the graph of sine is just the same thing repeated over and over again. And so if we just sort of restrict our attention to one part of the repetition, then that's sort of good enough. Okay, so um, what the, the convention is for sine is that we'll restrict our attention to uh, between minus pi halves and pi halves and um, on that part of the uh, x-axis, the function looks like this. Okay, so restrict x to minus pi halves to pi halves, and then it is one-to-one. -one. Okay, so the, um, the the importance of one-to-one -one is that when a function is one-to-one, -one, an inverse function exists. And we call the inverse function arcsine of x. Uh, or you'll definitely see it written like that, sine to the minus one. I really hate that notation, and so I prefer to write arcsine all the time. Um, the reason being that when you see the exponent of minus 1, you might be tempted to say, oh, well, that's 1 divided by sine. Well, that's not true. It's not what we mean by um, inverse. Okay. So, um, uh, right. And we can do similar restrictions for the other trig functions. Um, so we'll... Um, We'll uh, just keep going with sine, and then we'll talk about cosine and uh, uh, tangent later. Um, okay, so what the the recap of this is, and I'm going to need to go to a new page, is that, um, oops, go back to the black ink. If x is in minus pi halves to pi halves, 
then sine of x has inverse arcsine of x, okay? And if I say y equals sine of x um, with x in negative pi halves to pi halves, then uh, y is in between negative 1 to 1. Okay, that part isn't a surprise because uh, the sine function is always between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so let's actually start and consider this. y is arc sine of x. This means that x has to be between negative 1 and 1, and y is between negative pi halves and pi halves. Okay, so here I'm exchanging the role of x and y uh, so that we can think of um, arc sine as a function in of, its, of its own right. Um, okay, and uh, what this means, uh, it means that x and y are in that range, and, and this is the, the good part, it means that x is equal to the sine of y. Okay, so the reason that I wanted to kind of write everything like that is um, this allows us to then do some calculus. So the, the big question here is what is the derivative of arc sine of x? Um, okay, so given what we've written right in here, how could we approach answering that question. So any comments from the peanut gallery? Bueller. Bueller. No comments, no ideas. Um, all right, well, ooh, Willie, yay. What you got, Willie? Yeah, well, I guess not. All right, well, anyway, uh, we can do implicit differentiation. So if we have x equals sine of y, um, what we're really trying to find here is find dy dx. Well, we have an implicit equation that involves uh, x, uh, x and y, in this case with the sine function, so let's just take the derivative of both sides. So derivative of x is equal to the derivative of sine of y. So what's the derivative of x? So either shout it out in the uh, Twitch channel or uh, type it. Should be real easy to type this one. Yep, good, one. All right, what's the derivative of sine of y? So this will be the right-hand side of the equation. Survey says derivative of sine, guys. Come on, this is not rocket science. Cos y, all right. So cos y times what? What do I need to multiply by here? Aha. Uh -huh. 
dy dx. Why do I need to multiply by dy dx? So what, uh, what made me do that? So this bit is the old chain rule. And it's because y is a function of x. Okay. Um, okay, so now that I have that, can I solve this equation for dy dx? Sure. I just have to divide by cos y. Um, and if you want, you can write that as secant of y. Um, now, this is a little bit of an unsatisfactory answer because the original function we started with, arc sine, um, uh, the original function arc sine was uh, a function of x, not y. So we have the answer here that the derivative is secant of y, but what is that, right? Can we simplify this a little bit to say it's in terms of x? Um, okay, so let's go back over to, um, let's go back up here and think about what does it mean for x to equal the sine of y? Well, what does the sine function even mean? So in high school, what did you, th how did you think of sine? You thought of it as, uh, in terms of SOHCAHTOA. So if I put the angle there and I call that y, what is, in terms of SOHCAHTOA, sine of y? So in terms of my little right triangle there, what is sine of y? So sine y equals something over something. All right, well, what does SOHCAHTOA stand for, guys? Yeah, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Now, what is the opposite here? It's this segment. And the hypotenuse is, of course, that segment. And we want, oops, sorry, we want that to equal x. Okay, so what that means is um, that and I'm going to get the eraser out of here. So I just copied the uh, the triangle. But if I want the opposite over the hypotenuse to equal x, then I could accomplish that by putting x there and 1 in the hypotenuse. Okay? And then opposite over hypotenuse would be x over 1, which is just x. That's what I wanted it to be because our original assumption was that x was equal to sine of y. Okay, so now that I have that, I've got a right triangle, and I know two of the three sides of it. I know uh, one leg and a hypotenuse. So how do I solve for the other leg, the base leg in this case? I need to know that. What is it? How can I solve for that missing side? IDK. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Well, yeah, undo the Pythagorean theorem. So I know that, let's call this question mark, x squared plus question mark squared equals 1. And so question mark squared is 1 minus x squared, and therefore question mark is this. Okay. 
So, so this equals the square root of one minus x squared. Okay, so now that I've got that, um, I needed to, uh, let's go back to what we solved for in our derivative. We had this. Okay, so let's go down here and say dy dx, sorry, the dog's going nuts, is one over cos y or secant of y. That's what we found a minute ago. Well, now that we have this triangle, no, sorry, guys. Mia, this is going to be really annoying. Go on, go outside. Go on, go outside. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, so where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Um, so secant of y, or no, hush. Um, damn it, this is going to get really annoying. Um, so secant of y, no. Um, secant of y. Hang on, guys. I'm sorry. Me? No, seriously. No. No. All right. So, what I was trying to say was we've got secant of y. Um, and because we have the, uh, the right triangle, we actually know what secant of y is. Uh, so what is secant? Well, it's the reciprocal of cosine. All right, so cosine of y in our triangle. So let me kind of write it this way. Cos y would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. And secant is just that flipped upside down. And so we get the square root of 1 minus x squared in the denominator. Okay, so the recap, the, uh, let's maybe put it this way, TLDR is that the derivative of arc sine of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so uh, does that make sense? So basically what we were just doing there was using uh, our knowledge of uh, trig and uh, then implicit differentiation, and that kind of did the job for us. All right, so any questions on that? So what's next is to do this for the other five trig functions. Uh, the good news is that we only have to do it actually for um, uh, two more, uh, tangent and cosine. Uh, so let's actually do tangent next because uh, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so arc tangent. Well, here we have to make a, a different a little bit of a different restriction. So here, if we say y equals arc tan of x, this means that x is tangent of y, and y is in uh, negative pi halves to pi halves, but this time it's roundy parentheses, not square brackets. And the reason for that for it being roundy uh, instead of square brackets, is if you think for a minute, what does the graph of tangent look like? Well, it has asymptotes every pi halves radians um, because its tangent is sine over cosine, and whenever you divide by something, if that thing is zero, then you're in you're in trouble. Um, so. 
um, if um, uh, if the denominator of, a, of an expression is zero, uh, then it's undefined, and tangent, therefore, is undefined when uh, the value that you're plugging into it is pi halves or minus pi halves. We didn't have that problem with sine because that's where sine was 1 and negative 1. There was no division involved. Um, but with, with tangent, there is. So, okay, good. Um, so basically, we want to play the same gambit here, is that if we start with x equaling tangent of y, and we take the derivative of both sides, then 1 is equal to, well, what's the derivative of tangent? We, of course, remember this. It's secant squared of y times dy dx. And again, the dy dx comes in because of the chain rule, uh, like before. Okay, so now if we solve for dy dx, it would be 1 over secant squared y, which I could write as cosine squared y. Okay, so now what we need to do is sort of the triangle game that we did a moment ago. Uh, but this time our triangle is going to uh, look a little different because our fundamental equation was that x was equal to sine y. Oops. Okay, so in my triangle, uh, or sorry, not sine y, it was uh, tangent, we're doing tangent this time. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I put x there and 1 there, then tangent of y would be x over 1, which is x, and that's what it was supposed to be. Okay, and then, like before, how do we solve for the missing side? In this case, it's the hypotenuse. Well, we use Pythagoras' theorem, and we get this. Okay, so the original question then was dy dx we found was supposed to be cos squared of y. And in my triangle, what is cosine of y? Well, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And in my triangle there, the adjacent is uh, 1, and the hypotenuse is the square root of 1 plus x squared. So uh, we get this. But then that whole thing got squared because we had cos squared, not cos. And so we end up with just 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay. Um, all right. So kind of the same idea, but we were just doing it with uh, tangent instead. And uh, similarly, we can do this with cosine. Uh, but with cosine, we have to make a, a slightly different restriction. So with cosine... Um, y equals arc cos of x means x is cos y, and the angles uh, for cosine, uh, the standard ones there are uh, 0 to pi, not negative pi halves to pi halves. That's just the convention. Um, and if we go through this one, well, same idea. 1 would equal negative sine y times dy dx. And so dy dx is negative 1 over sine y, which is the same as negative cosecant of y. And then if we draw our triangle, um, so uh, cosine of y is x, so that would put an x there and a 1 there, and that would make this that. And so then we have negative 1 over sine, which would be the that. And so we end up getting negative 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. Okay, so works the, the same way that it did with uh, cosine and uh, tangent. Um, and there we go. Uh, okay, so uh, so the recap here is that we've basically just discovered the following three rules. 
the derivative of arc sine of x is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative of arc tan of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And the derivative of arc um, cosine of x is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. Uh, and then we're missing still three trig functions. Uh, we've got uh, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Um, we could go through and do kind of the same game with those, but we don't need to because we know that, for example, secant is just 1 over cosine. And so I can get the derivative of that by thinking of it as a fraction, 1 divided by cosine, and then doing the quotient rule. Uh, so there's we don't really need to do the other three trig functions the same way as we did here. This will suffice. Okay, so um, any uh, any questions over that uh, that stuff uh, before we kind of move on to, to something else? Um, okay, so um, let me uh, let me go to a new page, and there's one thing that I forgot to tell you guys about um, that is going to be relevant to uh, to several of the assignments. So, um, and that's the idea of a tangent line versus a normal line. Okay, and the difference is not horrible. Uh, so if I draw, let me just draw a random curve, and I'll pick a point on it, and I'll draw the tangent line. Okay, so we know what the tangent line looks like. Uh, and let's say that we're doing it at this point. The normal line is just perpendicular to it. So if I draw through that point a perpendicular, then that thing is called the normal line. And now the question is, how do you find it? Well, do we know what point it goes through? Yeah, it goes through the same point that the tangent uh, went through. So then the only other question we have to ask is, what's the slope of it? Okay, and so for that, we have to go back to, um, to uh, high school. So suppose line L has slope M and line K has slope N. So what's the relationship between the slope of uh, perpendiculars? So L is perpendicular to K if and only if what? M times N equals what? So if you multiply their slopes, what number should we get? Assuming that these are perpendicular lines. That's the key. Okay, almost. Almost. What are you guys missing? There we go, thank you, Austin. It's negative one. Okay, so you another way to say this would be that the slope of the perpendicular is the negative reciprocal. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, whoops. Uh, yeah, hang on one second. Uh,
Um, okay, so um, right. So the the slopes of the uh, lines have to be uh, uh, sorry. Slope of perpendicular lines have to be negative reciprocals. Um, so uh, if you want to find a normal line, first thing is find the tangent line. Um, and um, if you uh, once you found the tangent line, you can find the normal line by just using the same point. Um, and uh, the slope then would be just the negative reciprocal. Okay. Um, now, how did you find the tangent line slope? Well, that's the whole point of the derivative, right? So, uh, so let's just take a, an example um, just for edification. So let's say that we have uh, y equals x squared at the point uh, 2 comma 4. Then the slope um, would be 2x at 2 would be equal 4. And so my tangent is y minus 4 equals 4x minus 2. Uh, and if we go ahead, let's go ahead and solve that in y equals form. 4x minus 8 plus 4 would be 4x minus 4. And um, uh, so that's the derivative, or sorry, the, uh, the, the tangent line. So tangent is y equals 4x minus 4. The normal, well, what's the slope of the normal line? The slope would equal negative 1 fourth. How did I get that? I did the opposite reciprocal of uh, the slope. Okay, so then we just have to do point slope form again. We would have y minus... Uh, the y-coordinate, which in this case was 4, equals um, the slope times x minus the x-coordinate. And if we solve this again, then we would get negative a quarter x um, plus 4 plus um, a half, and it's a plus because of the double negative, so this would be plus nine, oops, nine halves. Okay, um, so let's just graph this to make sure that uh, I didn't mess it up. And um, so I'm gonna pop open Mathematica here, and, uh, and we'll graph these two things and make sure that it uh, looks right. All right, so uh, let me blow up the size here. So our function uh, in question is x squared. And um, we just uh, found that the uh, tangent, uh, the tangent lines equation, um, well, let me just say it this way. Uh, let's just plot x squared, uh, and then the equation of our tangent line was 4x minus 4. Oops. And let's plot this from, say, 0 to 4. Um, oops. Forgot the x right there. Okay, so looks pretty good. That looks pretty tangent to me. Um, and then the thing that we found was our normal line was negative a fourth x uh, plus 9 over 2. And that does not look perpendicular at all. Um, OK, so that means we've messed up something in the algebra here. Uh, does anybody see any obvious errors on my part? Uh, Now, let me try one thing here. Nope, definitely still not perpendicular. Um, and 
that was a terrible idea. Oh, okay. So there we go. Uh, yeah, so they are perpendicular. It's just that um, here, let me expand the uh, let me expand this a little bit so that we can see more. So there we go. So they are in fact perpendicular. It's just that uh, when I graph it, um, the um, I have to make sure basically that the axes in Mathematica are squared off so that I have the exact same amount of x as I do y. Uh, so this would be like on your your calculator when you have to do like uh, uh, get the viewing window and stuff like that set up. Um, right. Okay. So normal lines, no big deal. They're just perpendicular to tangent lines. Um, tangent lines we get from the derivative. So once you know that, then you can get the normal line pretty easily just by doing the negative reciprocal to get the, the new slope, and that's it. Um, okay. So I think, uh, think that's good for today. Uh, any questions? And I'll have some updates, uh, course update info on uh, <coughs> Canvas and stuff. I've been thinking a lot about how are we going to do exams, for example, um, thanks to the stupid coronavirus. So can I do the normal line again? Uh, so you mean back on paper, the um, how I found it, or the graph part? Finding it. Okay, so let's go back to the iPad. Okay, so um, first off, are we cool, Nathan, or sorry, Matt, with um, how I found the equation of the tangent line? So that would have been uh, this. Okay, so the tangent line had slope of 4. So that means that the normal line has to have slope of minus one fourth because perpendicular lines, as we said, have opposite reciprocal slopes from each other. Okay, so that gets me that the slope of the normal has to be negative one over four. So are you cool with that part? Okay, good. So uh, in this case, right, so let me go back to my cheesy picture. Um, the normal line goes to the same point that the tangent line does. Um, so it touches the curve at exactly one spot, but it's doing it by going through it rather than kind of being tangent to it. So um, what is the... Uh, um, so I know that the coordinates of the point that my normal line goes through are exactly the same as uh, the coordinates that my tangent line goes through. And so to get the equation for that line, I'm just going to do exactly what we did with the tangent and do point slope form. Right? So y minus the y coordinate is equal to the slope times x minus the x coordinate. And the point is still... 2 comma 4. Okay, so the point doesn't change to go from a tangent to the normal. The only thing that changes is the slope. Um, so we just set up a uh, point slope form just like we did before, and we get that. Um, and uh, once we've got it set up in point slope form, then I just kind of distributed everything to make it uh, y equals uh, the y equals form. Uh, for convenience, really. Uh, okay, so does that uh, clear that up? Matt, we go to your product. Yep, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, so I think uh, we'll go ahead and, and quit for today. Uh, so I'll have some updates for you guys on uh, course stuff and, and whatnot. Thanks to this, we have to be coronavirus.
uh, and stay home uh, on Canvas. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and quit the stream. And as usual, if you guys have questions, I'll be in um, uh, the Discord server and uh, feel free to, to hit me up there. All right, see you later.